हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर प्रियंका चंद्रा असिस्टेंट क्यूरेटर फ्रॉम भारत कला भवन इट इज़ अ म्यूजियम ऑफ आर्ट एंड आर्कियोलॉजी सिचुएटेड इन द कैंपस ऑफ बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी वाराणसी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल पोर्ट्रेल ऑफ वुमेन इन इंडियन आर्ट अंडर द पेपर थिएटर एंड फाइन आर्ट्स after studying this module you will be able to understand the representation of women in indian art from indus valley civilization up to british period various art forms will be discussed in detail women have been portrayed in the visual art right from the beginning of the prehistoric times the divisions of labor between the gender in the prehistoric society had given to women to express their thought and imaginations through the medium of visual art as can be revealed from the visual art in the prehistoric time the women was revered as mother goddess india has always held women as mother who is an object of adoration through the ages that is why it is represented the age old tradition of mother goddess worships in one or other forms the beginning the civilization the india the worship both as a cult shakti and as a folk worship still in voice and has been practiced in similar spirit that is uh, ought to be in the past however elsewhere the tradition of the mother goddess worship has been lost in the oblivion though the antiquities show that the worship of mother goddess was very much in voice in almost all the major cultures and civilizations of the world when the primit primitive communities realized the significance of motherhood they defined mother as mother goddess mother is addressed to both the biological mother who will virtually give birth to children and the mother earth which is in all sense provide food shelter and everything discriminately and without any affiliation she is the symbol of creation source of all living and non living things she is also the universal mother and everything emerged out of her she also pervades and sustains creation as has been evident from the fertility cult which was prevalent in ancient world the fertility cult was later got associated with the mother goddess worship she is also uh, christians as mother earth as she is not only the symbol of generation but also the receiver of life hence her origin and attributes are endowed with power and caliber to generate and so they have been life giving symbols the biological and nurturing responsibilities of a mother both consciously and unconsciously have been compared with the mother earth thus her first manifested representation in the earth and earthen terracotta figurings in which she is depicted as a pregnant woman or a, a mother with a child this shows prehistoric men were conscious about the qualities and virtue of a mother which they used to uh, revel and thus try to manifest them in many tangible forms even earthen pottery is a symbol of creation and death that is why earthen pot are graves good were buried with the dead bodies on earthen pots are uh, broken before the dead are burnt in the funeral fire symbolizing the end of the mortal mother is the embodiment of activity power 
एंड फोर्स शक्ति बाय वर्चू ऑफ ऑल दीज एट्रीब्यूट्स शी प्रोटेक्ट्स हर चिल्ड्रेन फ्रॉम ऑनस्लॉट एंड डोमिनिकल इन्फ्लुएंसेस शी इज द टटरली डी टी ऑफ एवरी विलेज इन इंडिया फ्रॉम कश्मीर टू कन्याकुमारी एंड कच्छ टू कच्छहार द पीपल इन द विलेज कंसेशली सेल्डम नो अबाउट द ऑरिजिन ऑफ देयर डीटीज एंड द फिलोसफी और थाट एंड ट्वेंट देयर इन रैदर दे आर मोर कंसर्न अबाउट द फैक्ट हाउ वेल देयर लोकल डीटी और द ट्यूटरली डीटी कुड हेल्प देम इन प्रोटेक्टिंग देम सेल्फ फ्रॉम द ऑनस्लॉट कॉज ड्यू टू नेचुरल कैलामिटीज और डिजीजेज आउट ऑफ फेयर दे साइकोलॉजिकली टेंट टू वर्शिप द लोकल डीटी एज अ प्रोटेक्टर और हीलर हु इज मोर इजली प्रोपिशिएशेड बाय प्रेयर फ्लैटरी एंड ऑफरिंग्स मोर रेडी टू डिफेंड देम ईविल्स मोर इरिएटेबल अनसर्टेन एंड वेवर्ड इन हर टेम्पर एंड मूड्स मोर डेंजरसली स्पाइट एंड प्रोन टू इनफ्लिक्ट डिजीजेज इफ शी इज ऑफेंडेड बाय नेग्लेक्ट द मदर गॉड इज वर्शिप इवॉल्व इन मेनी ग्विजेज एंड फॉर्म्स थ्रू आउट इंडिया समटाइम्स इट कंसर्ट ऑफ द प्राइमवल डिटीज ब्रह्मा विष्णु एंड शिवा समटाइम्स एज अ फीमेल काउंटर पार्ट of the most powerful deities and very often as local deities without having any affinity with the brahmanical religion men needed images for they could not comfort comprehend the unmanifested one the intelligible one or the formless one hence they always looked out of conceiving the deity in some or other form of worship her after defying her as goddess or a protector she has been represented in various medium such as clay stone bamboo fruits plants so on and she has been also sculptured and painted in various realistic art form in which the artist and artisans try to depict her qualities and virtues in iconic forms women have been shown in different art forms like in painting sculptures and as well as terracotta all these forms from indus valley period up to gupta period have been discussed this will help to understanding changing value of women in the society so we have various forms of art which is uh, on the basis of study we have to identify them uh, like in four parts that is stone sculpture which we find from indus valley to late medieval period then terracotta which is again found from indus valley to the present time and women carved on monuments and temples stupas and temples and last but not the least the paintings the paintings from prehistoric era from ajanta paintings and miniature paintings followed by the modern paintings also so in the present image we can see the earliest mother goddess the rock art of india include carving engravings and paintings it is estimated there about uh there are 1300 rock sites uh with over a quarter of a million figurines and uh found which is uh, studied by gordon the earliest rock carving in india were discovered by carlyle 12 year 
before the cave of Altamira in Spain were discovered. Dr. V. S. Vakankar discovered several painted rock shelters in central India situated around the Vindhyan mountain range. Of these, the Bhimbataka rock shelters have been deemed a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The paintings in these sites commonly depicted scene of human life alongside animal and hunted with stone implements. Their style varied with region and age, but the most common characteristic was a red wash made using a power, uh, powdered mineral called geru, which is a form of iron oxide that is hematite. The depiction of criminal dances, birds, musical instruments, mother and children, pregnant women, men carrying dead animals, drinking and burning appeared in rhythmic movement, belong to the Mesolithic period. Women have an extraordinary feature of giving birth, which provide it a special position in art. Here we can see some paintings from cave, from the wall of the caves, where we can see the female images painted on those walls. Various type of colors like ochres were used to paint these female figures. There is another female figuring from the Indus Valley Civilization. The image such as this era that is terracotta statue from the Indus Valley Civilization were perhaps representations of goddess who were worshipped for their life-giving powers. It is hard made and with decorated with applique design. Eyes are made with applique design, nose is made with pinching technique and mouth is made by cut silk technique. She is wearing an elaborated fan shaped headdress. She is wearing seven layers necklace which is gradually increasing in length when come towards the stomach. Each necklace has two or three pendants. She is also wearing a griddle on her waist. She also seems to be wearing an armlet although both of her hands are lost. Another image from Indus Valley Civilization found from Mehargarh. It is again accepted as the image of Mother Goddess. So this is a different kind of image. She is made of terracotta. This is also handmade. Eyes are shown with the small dots and the nose is made by pinching technique. The necklace and earrings are made with the coiling technique. Breasts are prominent. She is made in sitting mode. Many scholars agree that the female figurines from the mature Harappa period are either representation of higher class, religious women or as divinities. Unfortunately, the writing of the Indus Valley Civilization has not been deciphered to give us insight as to which of these theories is correct Using the pure archaeological evidences, it is important to understand that both of these theories can be accepted as the archaeological evidences shows a possible overlap. Figurines may have represented females in the current society at, uh, as time progressed into the mature Harappan ornamentation increases with the rise of the civilization and possibly with the increase in heterogeneity causing a creation of the high class with access to magic, power or overall religious divinities. By the end of the mature Harappan period uh, where female figurines are distinctly ad adorned, uh, this may represent a rise in religious beliefs in mother goddesses.
such beliefs may be influenced the development of hinduism and its concept of goddesses as well therefore in the mature period of the indus valley civilization female figurings depicted in the history of this era by documenting an increase in heterogeneity and religious beliefs through that adornment and overall representation of women in the context of india we must uh, both uh, forget in the context of india we must not forget to mention that there uh, the mother goddess have been found only in banavali in haryana in india none of the other none of the other than this any mother goddess has been reported from indus valley civ site in india the archaeologists are still trying to get the reason behind that mcp shrivastav has studied in detail about the mother goddess in india in the other image we can see women are depicted as a performance this is a image found from bharat stupas depicted on a pillar this image we can see various female figures are involved in singing and playing different instruments the evidence is enough to justify that female were allowed to perform such activities by the society we can see some inscriptions inscribed on this pillar also so in the other images we can see some female figures depicted on a terracotta plaque in the first image it is shown a visual family divinity with fine auspicious hairpins hairpins have a different different symbols which has different different meanings related with the prosperity of life this image belongs to 2nd century bce that is shunga period it is known as oxford yakshi because it is uh, housed in ashmolean museum university of oxford united kingdom and in the other image we can see again a female figure depicted on a plaque made of terracotta so it is like yakshi under a flowering ashoka tree so again we can see the prosperity is shown in a symbolic way this again belongs to second century to first century bce shunga period in the present image we can see the image of goddess lakshmi so it is an ivory statue found from pampoi italy and belongs to indian civilization first century ce the head which is shown in the image however shows that the statue has been used as a handle probably for a toiletry object or as a support of some kind of furnishing the beautiful carving we can see in the image is outstanding in the present image we can see a gold coin depicting figure of male and female so with the help of the inscriptions we comes to know that is these are the images of queen kumar devi and the king chandragupta first which are depicted on the coin of their son samudragupta which ruled in india from 335 to 380 ce this is a gold coin belongs to gupta period this is also symbolically represent the beautiful coordination between male and female as a couple again we can see some paintings from ajanta caves so they are depicted on cave number 1 so in the first image it is one of the last cave to have been excavated belongs to the vataka emperor harishind he was the benefactor of the hard work and this is reflected in the emphasis on imagery of royalty in the cave with those jatakas tale being selected that tale of those previous lives of buddha in which he was royal
in the second image we can see some female depictions on the wall of ajanta caves sometimes the images narrates a jataka story in the third image we can see a female depicting on the wall a dancer is shown with full complement of accompanying musicians has been depicted it is said that maha janak jataka is been depicted on this image in the present image we can see a dancing celestial in uh, found from india uh, uttar pradesh the early 20th 12th century the sand is it is made with sandstone promised gift of florescent and albert ivory uh, stored in metropolitan museum of art image of dancing semi divine attendants uh, often appear on a outer wall of a hindu temple art in medieval india is the final integral development of the maturity of gupta art the hindu sculptures paintings and architecture are the most important works of medieval art in india in the north the invasion of the delhi sultanate and the moguls brought in the indo islamic art which is an important moment in the history of medieval art in india the paintings of the rajput school of art are the great significance during this era the architecture of the medieval period is regarded uh, from its metaphysical aspect that is has a kind of magic replica of some unseen region or scared being and that is was purposely this metaphysical factor that determined the plan and elevation rather than any aesthetics or functional consideration the medieval painting is the work of rajput school rajput painting is the work of artist attached to the princely court in rajasthan central india and the himalayan foothills of the punjab from about the 16th to the 19th century it is a style of painting that is a part in subject matter and conceptions from the exactly contemporary work of the artist attached to the court of the moguls rajput paintings always remained entirely traditional in its illustrations of the indian epic romantic vaishnava literature and musical modes the development of the rajput school of painting is the pictorial counterpart of the vernacular literature of hindustan the rajput miniatures are derived from earlier classic styles in this regard rajput art might be represented as a merging of folk art with heretic and classic tradition the rajput paintings are in the sense the the product of the development of popular vaishnavism centered particularly on the devotion of lord ram lord krishna who typified the worship of vishnu and shiva in their more accessible and loving aspects rather than in the heretic form in which they were venerated according to vedic rituals the rise of popular vaishnavism coincides with the renaissance of hindu literature and the beginning of rajput painting in the late 16th century rajput paintings are usually on a small scale although many of them are very obviously reductions of theme originally employed in the mural compositions in india art in the medieval period witnesses a wide range of development and progress the architecture and sculpture of this era is marked with indo islamic style and also the continuation of the native art and architecture during the reign of akbar the persian artists were attracted to bring their unique style of the empire indian elements were present in their work from the beginning 
with the incorporation of local indian flora and fauna they were otherwise absent from the traditional persian style the paintings of this time reflected by vibrancy and inclusion of akbar's kingdom with production of persian miniatures the rajput paintings and the pahari style of northern india they also influenced the company style watercolor paintings created during the british rule many years later with the death of akbar his son jahangir took the throne he preferred each painter work on a single piece rather than the collaboration fostered during akbar's time this period marks the emergence of distinct individual styles notably bishandas manohar das abul al hasan govardhan and daulat the rasmanama and an illustrated memoir of jahangir named tazuk e jahangiri were created under his rule jahangir was succeeded by shah jahan most uh, notable architectural contribution is the taj mahal paintings under his rule were more formal featuring court scenes in contrast of the personal style from his predecessor's time aurangzeb who held increasingly orthodox sunni beliefs forcibly took the throne from his father shah jahan with a ban of music and painting in 1680 his reign saw the decline of mughal patronage of arts in the image we can see the practice of sati or widow burning it was applied to the hindu widow who followed her husband on to the funeral pray the practice was officially outlaw in the 1800s in the image we can see a lady with a mirror it is made on canvas with oil paints it is an oil painting on canvas painted by raja ravi verma in the year 1894 the picture shows a lady holding a mirror in her hand and combing her flock of hair the beauty of her style of her eloquently painted by the artist is noteworthy the painting won governor's gold medal in the present image we can see yashoda and krishna it is again painted on canvas with oil paints it is painted in 1901 by raja ravi verma here beginner of modern art in india the artist had used dark background in the painting in order to give relief to the main picture which are light yellow in the present image again we can see a lady smoking hookah and enjoying music she is seen seated on the throne under a canopy feeling relaxed she is well dressed and a female attendant is shown with the flowers standing behind her the painting shows a life royal female during 17th to 18th century ce so again in the image we can see a gunkali ragini painted on miniature painting the painting personifies ragini Gun- gunkali one of the wives of rag malkons the ragini gulkali is represented as a young woman standing on a chauki a low stool holding a chauri fan of uh, made with the animal hairs and a napkin on the other hand celebrating the rise of sun in the backdrop the temple situated in a grove is present the scenery reminds one of alampur or on the bas where raj sansar hand spent in the last few years the painting depicts the sad mood of love lorn lady again we can see an image of a female beauty called bani thani it belongs to kota school and it was made during 18th century ce the beauty of a female we can see in the image we can see an another image is also known as banithani style belongs to rajput style of painting 
again made in 18th century CE. In the present miniature painting, again we can see the lady is picking flowers. So it is a Mughal miniature painting belongs to 18th century. Again, the beautification of a female is beautifully shown in this miniature painting. In this present image, again we can see the lady is enjoying with the peacock. So this is also help to understand the female is enjoying the nature. The British colonial rule had a great impact on Indian art. Old patrons of art become less wealthy and influential and Western art more, more ubiquitous as the British Empire established school of art in major cities that is Bombay Art Society in 1888. So in the image we can see the Shakuntala beautifully portrayed by uh, Raja Ravi Verma. It is an important character of Mahabharat. The company style of painting become common created by Indian artists working for European patrons of the East India Company. The style was mainly romanticized with watercolor and uh, primary medium used to convey soft textures and tones. By 1858, the British government took over the task of administration of India under the British Raj. Raji Ravi Verma depicts Shakuntala, an important character of Mahabharat, uh, penetrating to remove a throne from her foot while actually looking for her husband or lover Dushyant, while her friends call her uh, bluff. Nandalal Bose was one of the pioneers of modern Indian art and a key figure of construct, const, contextual modernization. The fusion of Indian tradition with European style at this time is evident from Raja Ravi Verma's oil painting of sari clad women in a graceful manner. So in the present image, we can see a Maharashtrian lady painted by Raja Ravi Verma. A great painter, Badrinath Arya, has perfected the incredible technique of wash painting. The impact of color in his works is vibrant and pulsating with life. His creation, Savari, a Santhal woman, is the largest wash painting stored in Allahabad Museum. In the image, we can see the beauty of a tribal lady. In the image, we can see the devotion of Meera towards the creation. In the small painting painted by Shitenath Majumdar shows the emotions of a devotee. It belongs to Bengal School of Art. A pupil of Avanindranath Tagore, Nandalal Bose, was known for his Indian style of painting. He was influenced by the Tagore family and the murals of Ajanta. His classic works include paintings of scenes from Indian mythologies, women and village life. So in the present image, we can see the coordination between the two sisters is being beautifully depicted. This again belongs to Bengal School of Art. Um, Avanindra Tagore, another famous painter during British period in India, was the nephew of the poet Ravindranath Tagore. So, Bharat Mata was painted by Avanindranath Tagore in 18th century. Avanindranath Tagore painted a number of works influenced by Mughal art, a style that he and Hevel believe, believed to be expressive of India's distinct spiritual qualities as opposed to the materialism of the West. His best known painting, Bharat Mata, depicted a young woman portrayed with four arms in the manner of Hindu deities holding objects symbolic of India's national aspirations. 
Shri Jamini Roy was an Indian painter. He was honored with the State Award of Padma Bhushan in 1955. He was one of the most famous pupil of Avadindranath Tagore whose artistic originality and contribution to the emergence of modern art in India remain unquestionable. His new style was a reaction against the Bengal school and western tradition. His underlying quest was threefold to capture the sense of simplicity embodied in the life of the folk people to make art accessible to a wider section of people and to give indian art its own identity jamini roy's painting were put on exhibition for the first time in the british india street of calcutta in 1938 during the 1940s his popularity touches new height with the bengali middle class and the european community becoming his main clientele in 1946 his work was exhibited in london and in 1953 in the new york city he was awarded padma bhushan in 1954 his work has been exhibited extensively in international exhibition and can be found in many private and public collections such as the victoria albert museum london He spent most of his life living and working in Calcutta. Initially he experimented with Kaligat paintings but found that it has ceased to be strictly a patua and went to learn from villages patua. Consequently his technique as well as subject matter was influenced by traditional art of Bengal. He preferred himself to be called as patua. Jamini Roy died in 1972 he was survived by two son and a daughter currently his successors stay at the home he has built in kolkata his work can be found in various galleries across the globe as well as in his home it is evident that his followers and successors copied many of his work with the minor variations international and uninternational so the basic problem lies with the identification of the originality of his work famous works of jamini roy are cats plus cats sharing a prawn crucifixion with attendant angels gopis rad krishna and balram krishna and radha dancing krishna with gopis in boat makara queen on tiger ravan sita and jatayu santhal boy with drum seated woman in a sari three sisters etc so students let us now summarize what we have learned in this module so in the from the beginning we have seen a lot of images of women from prehistoric time to the modern time so one of the main factor which we can notice in the images that in the early images in the sculptures we have never seen any of the women is having veil on her um, on her face but it appears on the later period after medieval uh, after the invasion of india the uh, mogal and the other person when invaded india they affect the society so therefore the liberty of the female got lost and in the the images of the later period we can see in the miniature painting the women are uh, seen with the veil on her face or the parda system appears so this is a drastic change which can see which we can see in the society that totally change the status of women so therefore we can come to know how the representation of women got changed from beginning to the british period thank you